Hi, and welcome to Faith, Art, and Tiny Houses. I'm your host, Carmen Shank. <laughs> welcome back to the podcast. I'm here with Alex Eves today. He is a reuse expert, a filmmaker, and an apparel brand owner. Welcome, Alex. Hello. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your vegan lifestyle and, and help me. I'm not a vegan. I don't really quite understand the whole thing. Yeah. Um, help me understand how that is a, a save the planet approach for you. I'd like to hear yeah. that. So, so with that, like, uh, in a nutshell, my whole life, like every day we have the opportunity to make hundreds and hundreds of decisions and choices with how we live. Yeah. And for me, I want to do anything and everything that I can that is going to benefit, you know, not only myself, but benefit the planet. Cause I'm only here X amount of time. So why not do right. as much as I can with the vegan diet? Like you are making a huge impact and I, I call it the big three. So there's endless amounts of studies at how healthy of a lifestyle it is for the human body. You don't hear a lot of, you know, vegans who are dying of heart attacks and cardiac arrest and things like that. Um, and, and back to like when I started, you know, I personally saw it, I would go in for my checkup with my doctor and she'd just be like, why do you have no cholesterol? Your cholesterol levels are so great. Like all your blood tests are, you know, cause I was, I was always skeptical of the vegetarian or vegan diet growing up. Um, and I'm like, well, I don't eat eggs and I don't take in cholesterol. So, um, and then it's obviously the, greatest diet for our animals because you're not using and abusing <laughs> Cause them. Cause they get to live. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then, you know, it's, it's also the greatest diet for our planet because the way it works is like, we're literally creating middlemen that don't need to exist. So we could be eating and drinking all of the things that we're giving to these animals that will fatten up. So we're using all of those resources, all that time, all that space, all that energy, just to make these animals that we can eat. It's like, you're gonna like have these cows or pigs grow and it takes a bunch of time and energy and money when you could just be eating those grains and vegetables, whatever that you're going, you're using. And I mean, the biggest, you know, a big game changer for me, like, I was already vegan, but it was like another like nail in the coffin is that, you know, most of the Amazon is being torn down to raise cattle. Oh, like, crazy. That's crazy. Not, yes. Wow. It, yeah. And, but, but, but going back to what I just said, the, the middlemen is, that's the way I, I really try to sum it up for people, you know? We have limited amount of water resources in this world. We have limited amount of, you know, uh, plant growth, things like that, space for it. So why are we going to set up these huge, you know, barns and factory farms and everything to put all these animals when we could just be using that for our food? Yeah. You know, it's, it's just... I don't know. It just, it's, and, and just like a, in a number thing. So I created a shirt, um, a veggie burger shirt. So um, they did a study on how much water it takes, you know, for a pound of beef. And so for oh a pound of beef, it's <laughs> 2,500 gallons for a pound of beef. Whoa, so, crazy. Yeah. Um, and you know and what I saw? I saw one of the, sorry to interrupt, but I saw one of these the other day. It takes three liters of water to make a liter of plastic bottled, bottled water. <laughs> Good job, Nestle. That's yep. just insane. I'm sorry to interrupt. No. Carry on. <laughs> no, yeah. So, so you know, uh, I, I made a veggie burger sh themed shirt. Um, you know, and it was based on a half a pound of veggie burger. And it says by, um, I ate a veg, I ate a half a pound veggie burger and helped save 1900 gallons of water. So it's, it's amazing. basically the 1200 
from the half pound of beef and then the 700, you know, from the shirt itself. Because I'm very passionate about both movements, but there's a lot of people in each movement who don't necessarily get that they can work together and make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I spoke at a veg fest in Albany, New York a couple of years ago, and basically my talk was based around how wasteful the vegan diet is. Oh, you know, yes, I'm vegan, but there's so much packaging, you know, and a lot of the foods that I love, you know, from like the veggie dogs to the hamburgers to the fake cheeses, things like that. It's just so much packaging. You know, the healthiest vegan diet is going to be the more whole traditional term here, whole foods, not the grocery store, but right. the closer we are to the actual food, mm -hmm. you know, so the more fresh fruits, fresh produce you know, things like that, not just like this packaged processed foods that are out there. You can, you can be a very unhealthy frozen food snack vegan for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then that's the other thing too. It's like w with, you know, the environmental people, it's, it's very hard to accept that somebody is an environmentalist if they're really knowingly just like, I know that it takes 2,500 gallons of, you know, water to make a pound of beef, but That's I'm still going to eat Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like the facts are all out there and like the amount of an impact that we can make with, by what we put on the end of our fork is huge. So I, I just, I have to personally do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shenandoah Valley where I live is, is famous for poultry. And every time the, a uh, poultry truck goes by <laughs> i i say i'm gonna be a vegan <laughs> from here on no. out because it's it's absolutely horrifying yeah just to, doing my all the travels that i used to do with bands and myself around the country you know you roll into a gas station late at night in california and you see the trucks with all the pigs squealing or the cows oh. and it's pretty pretty depressing yeah you know yeah, that's horrible so <laughs> Not well food for thought <laughs> now i have some food allergies so i can't eat eggs or cheese or dairy or some of those things can you so recommend you're so close i am close i am crazy close um and i don't even like yeah it's the whole thing of seeing it on the truck that's yeah that doesn't yeah. work for me but tell me about a vegan cheese I heard you said vegan cheese. I haven't had cheese in a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, there's um so so there's there's like numerous levels of it. So the a, a brand Daya came onto the scene about I don't know 5 years ago maybe and it totally changed the game because it was like the first shredded cheese that melted and people were oh, just wow. like oh my god and all the all the frozen pizza companies started putting them on it and it was just it was a big game changer. And even since then, more cheese brands have come on board. Um, so in on the higher end, there's a woman named Yoko. Uh, she's based out of San Francisco. She's a famous chef out there. And she created a whole line of fancy nut cheeses. Oh, you know, interesting. Made, made with nuts. Um, and they're just like the, the small wheels of cheese. And I definitely was big into cheese years ago. And these are like amazing substitutes. Wow, so, game changer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what do you think is the most misunderstood part of being vegan? Oh, God. <laughs> well, two, two things. The protein thing. Because that's the sure. question. Everybody How says do you get your protein? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. First of all, protein is not something that we need like, Oh my God, I need as much protein as possible. I want to look like Jose Canseco did in 1989. You know, we, and we get protein from so many things. Yeah. There, protein is in I, spinach. <laughs> yes. Protein is in broccoli protein. Yeah. You know, I, I eat a lot of peanut butter one cause I, I love peanut butter, but yeah. also it is an amazing protein source. Beans, protein. Yep. Um, just, just, if you're out there, don't ask a vegan, how do you get your protein? <laughs> Just type in the words vegan protein into your Google search and you will see and you will be blown away. Um, but then the other thing is that, you know, oh, your diet must be so limited. You can't, 
it totally opened my eyes to a whole world oh, interesting. of different foods. Yeah. Because you, you know, I grew up very meat and potatoes, if you sure. will, and very yeah. standard meals and you know what you can have, but it just totally changed the game. I kale until like 10 years ago. I had never had so many different fruits and vegetables because we're trying to seek substitutes for all the other different things, you know? Right. So like, when I was a kid, I, I would have said hell no to having call it buffalo, buffalo cauliflower. But now that is like <laughs> such an amazing option for buffalo wings. Like there's just in the amount of, um, you know, different fake meats that are out there and, and just like, it's, yeah, it, it really makes you open-minded for sure. You feel like you're eating better quality food overall. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and again, you could be a very frozen food, you know, sure. processed vegan, but, um, it's, it's all about like, I'm sure you've heard before. It's like the less ingredients on the back of a box, the better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So obviously eating, you know, a <laughs> head of broccoli, there's one ingredient, but right. you, know, you, you can get a bag of chips that's vegan and it's got 35 ingredients. It's not going to be so healthy, but well, yes. Yeah, definitely overall. Um, and, and living in the truck, I have a pretty standard meal routine. Um, so, and I, I know what works, what I like, and that's healthy for sure. I find that with my food allergy situation, because I, I don't eat gluten, dairy, eggs, uh, and a few other things that generally when we go out to eat with somebody, everybody else at the table will eat whatever the, is the specialty at the restaurant. And my food is always better. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> it's not like I mean we went to this really fantastic Italian place and yeah. everybody had like stromboli is like loads of cheese piles of cheese wrapped in in gluten and yeah. I'm not saying that food is bad it's it's phenomenal but what was on my plate was shish kebabs with these beautiful red and green peppers and mushrooms and onions and it was it was amazing and yeah. <laughs> I looked at mine and I looked at theirs and I'm like I am not giving up a thing. I'm actually right. eating a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, very, very similarly, um, I love diners because, again, I love coffee. And diners, coffee, it's that vibe. So whenever I go to a diner, I'll almost always order the same thing unless it's like a vegetarian or vegan-friendly diner. But I will just ask for a very large portion of hash browns home fries, and then a bunch of veggies, pretty much any veggies they have except olives. Um, <laughs> I, wish, I wish olives were never invented. I don't know who did that They're blasphemy. Awful, huh? <laughs> Sorry to anybody olive fans out there, but they just ruined the taste of anything. Anyway, so almost every single diner that I've been to, they come out with this heaping portion of hash browns I'll always be like, wow, that looks really good. Yeah. I've had numerous servers say like, that made, that looked really good. I made myself a plate. There was one place in Cambridge, Mass. that put it on the menu. And uh -huh. it's like, yeah, like it's not a weird that's fantastic thing. It's just potatoes and vegetables. And, and that's like, that's a big misconception too. Like there's so much taboo, like vegan or plant-based. It's like, do you eat spaghetti with marinara sauce? Vegan. How about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Vegan. <laughs> Water. Vegan. Coffee. Vegan. Coffee. Like, vegan. Come on. Oh my goodness. That's funny. And here I, here I am drinking out of an elf mug who ate cats. <laughs> Fictional cats. Right. Right. He actually never ate one cat on the entire series of the show. Fun fact. <laughs> it would be a little bit hard to show wouldn't it yes, yes. <laughs> there was there was the one scene when he put the uh the family's cat in a um sub role but <laughs> <laughs> yep talk to me about how um our listeners can go and see your film uh where they can find it okay um so if you go to reusedocumentary.com, um, it's available there. You can rent it or you can download it. Um, but I am most likely going to make it available to stream for free. I'm just figuring out the best solution for that. So 
Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, I haven't had um, Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu knocking at my door yet. So. Yeah, that would be ideal. It needs yeah. a it needs a much broader audience. Yeah. Cool. Any plans on a take two, another round? Oh, oh yeah, we're in the. Um, I guess I thought you knew about that. So we're in the middle of making a documentary about this here truck. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, we actually just watched uh, the first forty-three minute or so take of it um, a couple weeks ago, um, but. As you know, some things have been altered. And yeah, some, yeah, it's been a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, we we um, we have so much footage from the build of this truck. It's crazy. Tentative plan is summer, but you know, life life is happening right now. So. Yeah, life is happening in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> so, how long does it take to create an hour long documentary? I mean, that's you've got a lot of footage. You uh, for the first um documentary you were all over the country yeah how long did that process take i traveled for three months um with you know it was it was essentially two months i took a month break quote unquote in california my my first videographer came down with um an illness and had to go home so i needed to figure out a solution but it was it was a good break and i hunkered down at my friend's house in california and then back to hit the road and then after that it was about um two years of writing editing trying to make money (laughs) during that time and putting it out Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so it originally it originally came out in uh august of 2015 okay um but the thing that I tried to do I tried to make it as timeless and give it enough shelf life as possible Mm -hmm. and really only recently people have started to really understand what I've been talking about with the title of reuse because you can't recycle the planet because recycling has been this you know godsend for years like oh you can create as much single-use plastic as you want it's going to be recycled oh recycle recycle but it's really not all that it's cracked to be cracked up to be. And, you know, when countries like China and India said, Hey, USA, we're not taking all your waste anymore to recycle. That's when people started to really grasp like, Oh, recycling is just not working. So my film has definitely gotten a bit of a resurgence, you know, so to say. Yeah. I was pretty horrified that, that we were using this word recycle, which I thought meant, you were kind of melting it down and make giving it another life using it again. And that's true in the case of aluminum, but it just got buried in a different part of the planet. It yeah. wasn't actually, I mean, it, I feel so ripped off. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I try to really tell people. It's like recycling is a guessing game. If you put something in a green bin, like maybe it's going to make it to the recycling plant maybe it's going to make it from that recycling plant somewhere to get recycled. Maybe it'll get used again. But if you take a reusable cup, this is a ceramic mug, but if this is a reusable cup and you use it again, you know exactly what you're doing. You know the impact that you're making. Yeah. And you don't have to waste that energy to put it in the green bin. Just rinse it out. There you go. (laughs) You know, People don't necessarily want to look trashy, but they don't mind walking around with literal trash in their hands. <laughs> it's yeah. like, sh- sure, it's not trash yet, but that's about to be trash. It's a heartbeat away from the landfill. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I feel that way about a lot of modern cars. They're just, you know, one little tap away from the landfill. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. What are your, some of your favorite products that are lasting especially long and are especially good for the reuse lifestyle? Um, interesting question. <laughs> uh, pallets. Yeah. Uh, like my <laughs> wall right behind me here. Yeah. It was, um, that was a crazy blue colored palette that we found at a sneaker company here in Massachusetts. Oh, that's great. Um, and Deke turned that into my wall. That's mm-hmm. the bathroom back there. Nobody okay. said it, don't worry. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> Just me in this 98 square feet. Um, 
Um, skateboards, skateboard. I, I think I'm just like looking around here. So <laughs> it, this is this is what I'm currently looking at. So that oh, was cool. Stay Vogel started as a skateboard brand. So, um, but skateboards, like, uh, do you know Chris Shaptick? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so he takes old skateboards, turns them into really unique lamps. Mm -hmm. um, I know this guy, he's another, uh, he grew up skating in Massachusetts too, Justin over in California. And he makes um, the stampers for espresso, espresso machines out of um, skateboard decks. And he's made a baseball bat for the major leagues. Like he's made a tabletop. Like it's really durable good wood but it's like if some of it cracks it can't be used as a skateboard mm -hmm. um so that's a really good one um again i'm like looking around <laughs> <laughs> just, do you have just, tell me about what you carry with you because you're not using plastic at a restaurant you're not are you taking uh taking your own cup your own flatware your own plate i mean yeah yeah so um i i kind of I like to say that I kind of carry a GI Joe accessories kit, you know, so if I was, if I was in a GI Joe package, you know, back in 1985, you know, my, the accessories that I would have would be a reusable shopping bag, my travel mug, which is also a travel French press, which is awesome. Are you kidding me? How cool is that? Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I got that, that thing has lasted. So, so, um about your question with like favorite reusable durable if you're going to get a travel mug get a stainless steel one this one is 12 years old Are and it's kidding me yeah no and i've dropped it uh you know when you know i used to bike a lot more in california dropped off my bike numerous times um it's it's held up amazing That's the fantastic. only thing that yeah so if you're gonna get something um definitely look into um speaking of that my friend in the uk has a website called buy me once so that's what it's all about it's like if you're gonna have to buy something get something that's gonna last i remember um, you posting about that yeah. and that was a pretty inspirational website there yeah. are some products yeah, out there you can buy once and yeah cool um so, so uh, the bag, the cup, and then I also have a, um, it's an organization called Green To Go in Durham, North Carolina. Um, they gave me one to take, but they are these reusable containers for restaurants. So they have a whole pro program in Durham, North Carolina, where instead of getting a disposable to-go container, you get your meal in this, you know, hard plastic shell of a thing. And then when you're done, you bring it to one of the washing stations. So I have one of those that I've been using for two years now. And then inside it, I have a fork and a spoon. Okay. Um, and then a reusable napkin. And then I also have a glass bottle for my water, you know, because <laughs> like, I don't need a, I don't need a fancy, like, you know, water bottle why am i going to spend 25 dollars to hold water so um i have my my friend runs um the fair hope juice company down in down in alabama so her juice is um in these really nice glass bottles and she has a whole reuse program that's why we actually teamed up but i just have one of her bottles for my water um and then i think that's it yeah yeah, and I mean, that cost me zero dollars. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. So so I mean, yes, it. Um, the Durham people gave me that. You normally can't buy those, but fork and spoon were from my house. Reusable napkin was, you know, just a cloth napkin was from my house. Um, the water bottle was, I got it free with a juice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the travel mug was a gift that somebody gave me, but that same exact mug you can actually find on eBay, um, for 10 to $15 still. So it's a Starbucks brand. <laughs> my, my friend in California did not like it. She's like, I don't really like this. I don't know how I use it that well. You want it? I'm like, yep, 
So, <laughs> and 12 years later, still, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's the same one that's on the cover of the movie there. Oh, cool. Yep. And so, how is it? How's the French press part of it work? It's not the best French press. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get. You'll in your teeth but you know it helps get the plaque off um but uh overall it's it's pretty good we were at a tiny house festival in the outer banks and i picked up two of these mugs because we had two mugs and i had just broken one and there's two of us and so xavier will put a teaspoon of coffee in the bottom and add super hot water on top of that and that's it that cowboy coffee <laughs> but doesn't he drink the grinds or no no, if you wait for a minute, they all sink to the bottom. Yeah. And then you drink the coffee off the top, and then you just don't drink the bottom tablespoon. And this morning, I was making his refill cup, so I stuck a half a chocolate bar in there and, and a little right. bit of honey. And that was, I mean, he says that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, brew mine, um, I brew mine with a little bit of usually raw sugar and cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. that sounds good. Yeah. I call it box truck coffee. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I come visit, there you go. When I roll through in this house, um, he'll have to make me some of that coffee because I'm curious <laughs> how that's gonna how that's gonna pan out. Oh, you can pick the little bits out of your teeth. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, we've talked about that a number of times on the blog, and it's just kind of funny because people are like, "Oh, I could never do that," but. In our original tiny house situation, there wasn't space for a coffee maker and, yeah. and, or the power. And so when I met him, he had a little espresso machine, and I never could figure that thing out. <laughs> but it just couldn't be simpler. Now that we're in a small house, we still don't need the coffee maker. Right. So it kind of works out for us. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Well, it's been a lot of fun. We've covered a yeah. lot of topics. And... Um, I really especially appreciate the information about the vegan thing because that's something I've been curious about and was really looking forward to hearing your answer on that one. And I'm, I'm partway there. I may, I may take the plunge. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, there's a good, uh, one good resource is 30 day vegan challenge. So that's a good way to, good way to try it. And if you have a whole foods near you, it's based on all ingredients that you can buy at whole foods. Mm -hmm. Um, then also just like the movies that were kind of, again, like hammering home the idea. And they're not like super propaganda-ish vegan movies. It's, um, I would say, um, Forks Over Knives, which is mm -hmm. basically, you know, diet over surgery. That's the, the other way to look at it. Yeah. Um, and I think they say the word vegan twice in it. It's just more <laughs> about, you know, eating healthier and it, it's got some really interesting studies and then cowspiracy is a great one um and then also um what's why am i oh vegucated oh interesting yeah yeah lots of lots of good stuff and right now we have a lot of time to watch the movies so <laughs> that's right <laughs> Well, thanks for joining me today for the podcast, Alex. Alex is yes, a reuse expert filmmaker and an apparel brand owner. Check him out at stayvocal.com and also check out that documentary at reusedocumentary.com. Thanks for being here, Alex. It's been a blast. Thanks so much. Cheers. You can follow me on Instagram at Carmen Rose Shank. You can subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please do. And you can download us on iTunes. The music is composed by William Kirkpatrick, lyrics by Louise Estead, arranged and performed by classical guitarist Jonathan Crispin. Show notes available at carmenshank.com.